This here is a small LCD based projector with a full HD resolution. It is portable, has a built in speaker and a decent color quality. In this video I'll make a teardown of this device and I'll do my best with the help of animations and footage to explain to you how a laser or LED LCD projector works, how the DLP projector works and the differences in between. We will also take a look at the different components we find inside this projector and why we have each one. This projector still works, and I use it sometimes, so I don't want to destroy it, so I have to be very careful. I hope that you will find this video interesting and that it will teach you something new about light processing, lasers, powerful LEDs, fast picture shutter, rotary filters and more. So make sure that you subscribe and activate the notification bell. A huge thank you to all my patrons for their support. So let's get started. Video sponsored by GLC PCB. I guess that you've heard they now have a low cost and fast SMT service. So get your PCBs assembled in 24 hours with their in stock more than 30,000 SMT components. In this way you can get the PCB with all the components already soldered in place, ready to use. So read more about the service on their SMT page. The finish on the solder points is very good. Production time is quite quick and prices starting from only $7. What's up my friends, welcome back. I have this projector for more than a year now and I sometimes use it. It's from a brand that is called Wowoto and is the model H8. It is portable with a rechargeable battery has built-in speakers, accepts HDMI input, a USB stick and has a Wi-Fi connection and an Android system, so it could be used as a smart TV. That's why I don't really want to break it. Anyway, let's open it and then I'll explain you with the animations how the LCD and the DLP projector works and what other technologies we have. To open it, I have just a few screws on the bottom and two more on the back. Open this is not that easy, since as always, the smaller is the product, the more difficult to open it. I managed to take out the top part of the projector. This part has the touchpad that we use to control the cursor on the screen. It also has the antennas for the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi connection. So with Bluetooth you could connect external speakers as well, for better sound. So carefully I remove all the connectors. Some connectors are glued in place so this will be very difficult to remove. I managed to take out all the connectors and the small push buttons and now I have separately the main control board and the rest of the components. So let's see what we have below. First we have the battery. In this case is a 3S battery of 12 volts. And in the middle we have the cooling fan and the speaker module. These are just two high quality speakers with an amplifier inside. Actually, the sound of this is quite good for such small speaker module. Now this cooling fan with the heat dissipator is a crucial component. Because the main board and the light driver will get very hot, and we need to keep this cool. And finally, the start of this projector is the RGB light unit. Inside here, the picture is created and then is beamed through some lenses to the wall in front of the projector. As you can see, we have three sets of wires. One is red, other is green, and another one is blue. So as you imagine, these are for the RGB light inside. The technology of this projector is based on an LED. So inside we have three sets of LEDs for red, green and blue lights. The light from all these will pass through an LCD display and then project the picture to the wall. This is a bit more complicated than just that and we'll see the details in a moment. Ok, so on the main board, to control each picture frame, we have this DLP chip from Texas Instruments and that is standing for digital light process. This chip is in charge of selecting the red, green and blue picture for each frame. On the PCB we can also see some voltage regulators, battery chargers and balancing, other important microprocessor for the HDMI input and so on. This here is the infrared receiver from the remote controller. This connector here is for the image output that will go to the light module. And about this component, let's see how a projector works. We have two main types of projectors, DLP and LCD. DLP stands for Digital Light Processing and LCD, well it means that it involves a liquid crystal display. I will explain these two types and the differences in between. So let's start with DLP. We start with a powerful light source. 
This light usually is an incandescent lamp, or for some newer models, an LED. This light source must output a lot of power. We need a lot of light in order to project our pictures. This light with the help of some prisms and lenses, it will point forward and then pass through some filters. This filter has the role of dividing the white color and only pass the red, green and blue color for RGB. So using these three colors, merging them one with the other, as you can see, we could get any color that we want. And that's how we get all the spectrum for the pictures. We can filter the white color in two ways. The first method is using a rotative filter. This would usually be on a disc that has the red, the green and the blue filters and this will be spinning. And in that way it will create the red, the green and the blue colors and it will do this very fast that our naked eye couldn't see the change between the colors. Ok, so the second way of dividing the colors is using the so-called power of 3. In this method we use special optics that reflect special colors and only let a specific color to pass, in this case the red, the green and blue. Using prisms, we merge the colors later and we create our picture. And that will be the second step of a DLP projector. Because once we have the three colors separated, we need to create our image. As you know, any RGB image could be separated into red, green and blue channels. To make this process, the DLP system uses a mesh of microscopic mirrors. Each of these small mirrors will represent one pixel. So if the microscopic mirror is pointing in a specific direction, light will be projected to the wall and the pixel is created. But if the mirror is pointing in a different direction, the light won't be able to pass and now we have a turn off pixel, representing black color. In case of the rotary disc, when we have the red filter in front of the light, we arrange the mirrors in such a way to create all the pixels for the red color and then we blast that to the wall. Then we do the same for the pixels for the green color, and then the blue one. This process is done so fast that our eye will see the blend between the colors and create the real picture. The DLP chip is in charge of controlling the micro mirrors for each color, and of course there should be some sort of feedback from the rotating filter to the DLP chip, and that will tell it which color is activated. The resolution of a projector is given by this mirror mesh. Because the more mirrors we have, the bigger will be the resolution, since that means more pixels. These microscopic mirrors are very small and we can't see them with the naked eye, but we could see them under a microscope. Because they are so small, they can move very fast without breaking. To change the direction of the mirror, we use this microscopic hinge mechanism, and just a small amount of tilt is enough to point the light in a different direction, so the light won't exit the projector. And the final step for all this is the focusing lens. Depending on the distance to the wall, we might need to use this lens, in order to focus the pixel onto the correct distance. Ok, so on the other side we have the next technology, the LCD projector. In this case, the same as before, once again we have a light source and we divide the colors in the RGMB. But now, instead of using the micro mirror mesh, we use LCDs. We can polarize the pixels of an LCD and create some sort of mask. In this way, if one pixel is turned on, the light won't be able to pass. And if the pixel is turned off, the light could pass. For each color, we create a different mask onto the LCD. And by merging the frames together once again, we create the original picture. An even better solution is to use the three-way system, but using three different LCDs. One will create the pixels for the red channel another one for the green channel and another one for the blue. And then using prisms, we merge all lights together and beam the final picture to the wall. In this way we can do each frame at once. Actually, that's exactly how my projector works. It uses three different LCDs of Full HD resolution and using the red, green and blue colors, very fast it creates the picture. And then we pass that through the focusing lens and beam it to the wall. But there is one thing different. This one is an LED based projector. So you see, instead of having a huge light source and then divide each color with the filters, this new technology uses three separated light sources. Using LEDs we can achieve each color separately and we don't need the filters to do that. So basically we have an LED for red, one for green and another one for blue LCD and then we merge together all the frames and we get the picture. 
So that's what is happening inside this module here. These LEDs are using a lot of power, and that will dissipate a lot of heat. That's why we use this heat dissipator and the cooling fan, in order to keep the light source always below the maximum temperature. So the light will come from here, here and here, and this connector is the connector for the LCD screens. So these two components together will create the pictures. To focus the lens on the side, we have a DC motor with a gear system, that will push the lens forward and backwards. Ok, now let's see the differences. On DLP systems, we don't lose light power with the process of polarizing the LCD, because a certain amount of light will be filtered out, due to the LCD polarizing mask, so for good brightness, we need more powerful light sources. But on DLP systems, that won't happen, because all the light is reflected by the micro mirrors. On the other hand, using LCDs, we can make all three frames at the same time, so we can go to higher refresh rates. And at the same time, a lot more brightness, because all the light is used at the same time. With the rotating disc, we use only one portion of the light, but with a set of three LCDs, we can use it all at once. Also, because the LCD costs are getting lower and lower, an LCD based system will be a lot cheaper than making a precise micro mirror mesh. An LCD is also easier to scale up, from Full HD to 4K. There are plenty of cheap 4K LCDs that could be used for such a product. Finally, for even more brightness, we use powerful LEDs, because using just one simple white light and then filter out the colors, that will reduce the light amount. Sometimes only 20% of the light will get out and project to the wall, and that's due to those filters. But using LEDs, we can use full power for each channel without the filters. One last step in technology are the laser-based projectors, and here instead of LEDs we use lasers. With lasers the light is already beamed forward, so we need less optics. Also power is much higher, and best of all the wavelength of the color is more narrow, so we could achieve better color specifications. We can merge the laser diodes with the LCD screens before and do the same but using lasers instead of LEDs. Yet another type of projector that I found was using point lasers and moving mirrors. Again we use 3 sets of lasers for RGB colors. Then we have 2 mirrors that are moving perpendicular one to each other, and these are actuated by 2 electromagnet coils so we don't create too much sound. Applying an alternating signal to these coils, this will move the mirror side to side. If the laser is pointing at the mirrors, by moving the first one we control the vertical axis and by moving the second one, we control the horizontal axis. For real life pictures, this should be very very fast, and that's why this technology is restricted to simple shapes, or is too expensive in some cases. So guys, that's how the LCD and the DLP projector works. I hope that you have learned something new. If so, give this video a like, and if you are new, consider subscribing. Thanks to all my patrons for supporting my work. If you have questions, comment below, or use the forum on electronews.io. So thanks again and see you later guys.